I'm Clint, and welcome to Swatches Art Livestream number 106. Uh, we're going to be looking at some fantasy art um, entries for the fantasy characters. And we're joined once again by Anna. Welcome back, Anna. I think I unmuted the wrong channel. Why don't you say that again? <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to take a couple of minutes here just to go over some announcements, allow people the chance to join in the live stream before we get started. And uh, if you have joined us live, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, Anna and I are both illustrators. And in this episode, we're going to be reviewing entries for the art challenge. Now, these are things that have been set uh, by myself, getting some input from the community as well. And they have had four weeks to work on these concepts. And Anna and I will try to be giving the best advice we can to help the artists wherever they are in their art skills in order to help improve their piece or answer their questions. But let's go through a couple of announcements first. Okay, I'm going to move this uh, OBS out of my way. Don't really need that right now. So, if you have been following the progress on the uh, Patreon, we will be having Lessons 4, 5, and 6 of the Materials course coming out in the beginning of December. I will be working on those. In order to get those, you do need to be uh, pledged as a member before the 1st of December. That is the cutoff date, the 1st of December. Now, 1, 2, and 3 have already come out, and if you've missed those, you've already missed those. But four, five, and six are really great. We're going to be getting to advanced shading and getting into some highlights uh, and that sort of thing. Also, we got some new videos coming out. I just recorded a video on blending modes. The blending modes here in Photoshop as it pertains to digital art and uh, painting. Uh, I know we've had a couple of people asking about that before. And so I just, this one's kind of a crash course. Not real in depth, it's about 15 minutes to use and what to use them for, or what the differences are between them. Hopefully, this video will be able to help you out a little bit. When you started working in Photoshop, Anna, were blending modes something that confused you quite a bit? Um, let me remember. I think <laughs> I think what was most confusing for me is that some seem to have similar effects, and I didn't know where the strength are mm. for for each layers like i don't know when they all made like something a little bit more colorful or brighter or something i wasn't sure about the difference between each of these yeah yeah so we'll talk so. about that in the video uh, i am planning that will probably come out on monday and uh, then of course we have the wednesday streams for the members only here on the youtube channel you need to be a mm -hmm. tier two or super swatcher uh, that's just five bucks a month. You get a new weekly live stream. You get to submit your art to that to receive paint overs and uh, check out what those would be like. I also have a new Vibrance uh, video that'll be coming out soon. I've been thinking about this one for a while. It probably won't be a long video, but it deals with the topic of work-life balance. Of course, if you want to join in the community, we have many, many artists part of these watches community. 
Uh, the most active place right now is over on the Discord. You can see the link there. Uh, we were all just hanging out there. Well, actually, there's still a lot of people hanging out there, uh, working on stuff and chatting and just connecting because plenty of people like myself don't have any other artists around in the area. And it's still nice to uh, chat about this stuff and you know, have some friends out there in the art world. Now, you're out there more than I am, Anna. Uh, people staying active out there, I assume. Yes, um, we are having a lot of stuff going on every week. Uh, I repeat myself, but it, it's really a fun place. Um, it feels like family. I meet a lot of people there every day, new people, and they're all super nice and helpful to each other. We kind of recently started like hanging out all, even if you want to, um, in audio and video mm -hmm. and sharing screens. So there's a group of people, they're all drawing and sharing their stuff, tra traditional, this digital. Yep. Some are just there as to, to, to watch them. You don't have to share this stuff, but it's fun and you can learn a lot from each other. Yeah. Uh, I've enjoyed it. I've actually taken to hanging out there a little bit more myself. <laughs> anyway. Uh, lastly, if you are unfamiliar, I do offer mentorships. They are hour-long consults. You can schedule as many or as few as you need in order to help you progress from where you are. Some people schedule them just because they have a particular piece that they're having a problem problem solving or improving. And so it's kind of a one-time thing. We take a look at it. We figure out what we can improve. Other people basically are taking a, a progress checkup. They've been working for several years. Uh, now they're sort of hitting a plateau. They're not sure where to put their attention, what education they should be focusing on, or what they need to do in order to really polish off their portfolio. So we do that. Uh, I do have many repeat uh, students that come back about once a month or once every two months. And we check on their progress and try to make any tweaks to what they're working on in order to help them improve. So if that's interest to you, go out to art mentor dot com and you can schedule some time out there uh, my schedule is a little more spotty as we're moving into more of the holiday season but i should still have some times available so you can check that out uh that is all the ones that i'm remembering uh anything come to your mind that you want to mention as an announcement before we move on on mm, no i think we're good good to go okay cool uh, we already have quite a few people in the chat. Just a shout out. We have Joachim, Anna, obviously yourself, uh, Nito, Kong, <laughs> Olivia. Good to see everybody. And I know Doge told me how to actually pronounce that, and I forgot. Doge King. I'm going to try that. We'll see if that was wrong. Okay. So right now we have... Two, four, six, eight entries to take a look at. So we got to keep a pretty good pace here. The first one up, alphabetically, we'll just go with Alan R. Open that. Uh, for this, the challenge was to create an illustration to represent uh, some fantasy races. And I told them that if they had limited time and they couldn't do both fantasy races or both characters for the race, then just focus on doing one thing and try to do that one thing better. And so that's what's going on here with Alan. He said that he had a limited time, so he pushed to try to get one, uh, the portrait of the lady as far as he could. Now this race is a human variant in a fantasy game. So they have dark skin, they have natural occurring gold patterns on their skin. And they have a sort of Bedouin um, vibe as far as their clothing and general aesthetic. So, yeah, originally we just saw, I believe, the black and white of the character, as you see here in Character uh, 2 Concept 3. It was something on that lines. And we've got that painted up more over here. Anything else we need to hit? Uh, having a hard time adding details, constantly doing broad brushstrokes and revising. But don't feel like I'm making conscious decisions, but rather going with the flow and hitting a wall as I don't know what are the next steps. I think this is actually a good thing to hit on because everybody runs into this at different times, Anna. 
it's where you just start kind of messing around with the painting. Um, I've usually referred to that as noodling around. And because it's rooted in not really knowing what to do next. So when you come across that, what's something maybe that you do or what's some advice that you might send over to Alan that would help him with that sort of situation? Yeah, so basically what I did at that point is a lot of studies of the 3D forms and shapes of the face, um, a lot of planes of the hat studies, like you, there's mm -hmm. a, a class by Marco Bucci, you can, can uh, find it out there. Um, this really helped me a lot um, because once I, in kind of like the, the Patreon videos where I was taking part and I sent a portrait to Clint that time, and he told me the same that I tell this person is that you don't think about what is behind your object. So basically how it behaves as a 3D form in space. Mm -hmm. So we have light and dark. And back at that time, I also thought like, ha, huh? I'm having shadows and I'm having <laughs> highlights. And I'm like, what does this guy mean? But it is something that grows the more you study it. Yes. And then you learn to understand it, what people mean by saying that your art needs more thinking in 3D and seeing mm -hmm. the forms rather than the shapes. Yeah. That was yeah, my biggest I, I think that that's a good way to approach it. Um, Alan, for you, I'm going to answer this more as a, an art teacher rather than an art director on this fictional project. And Anna is exactly right. Uh, what you're facing is not really a rendering issue as much as it is an improvement of your understanding. The better that you understand 3D forms and how to light 3D forms and think in those terms, your pieces are automatically going to become better. Uh, and that is going to translate into the way that you render things. Right now you're still mentally, your, your brain is processing it as a collection of 2D shapes that have light and dark sides. Uh, but not really processing it in terms of 3D forms. And it's a very difficult thing to say like, oh, I can, I can tell you that because of this thing right here, the way that you painted this one thing. Um, if you haven't watched my video art advice that will save you years, go watch that one or anyone else that wants to know more about this topic. And I, I discuss this topic right here for, I don't know, 25 minutes or so in that video. And if you haven't watched it, go watch it. It'll give you a fuller understanding of what's going on. It also goes into the other video, which is uh, your brain is sabotaging you. Your brain is sabotaging your art. And is where you're trying to move away from drawing what your brain thinks something looks like to actually drawing what it looks like. And in order to draw what it actually looks like, you have to be able to compute the, the 3D volume of the subject. Um, as far as studies, uh, any particular studies you would recommend? I, I, I'm thinking, you know, doing simpler forms, doing lighting studies on those forms. Uh, doing yeah. simple forms, rotating them in 3D and shading them. What else would you add to that? Yeah, this is basically exactly what we started with in an art club. Like oh, yes. the, yeah. uh, we learned a lot about values first, and then we went into shape and 3D uh, forms. Um, same thing as you said, simple forms first, even if they're boring to you. It will help you a lot of understanding about reflectivity, um, mm -hmm. uh, like the, all the kind of lights, ambient, occlusion, blah, blah. There's so much stuff that you can learn. Yeah. And for faces especially, it's really, um, I kind of repeat myself, but the planes of the hand helped me so much. I just took yes. um, a 3D. There is, um, for example, out there, there are 3D photograph model so you have a human face that is nearly completely like you can turn it around in any direction and look from all angles mm -hmm. to find the sketch fab and all, all that 
And I made screenshots of that in uh, various poses. And then I drew the planes of the hat, this kind of net on top of these heads and figured out when they turn slightly what what happens yeah. to all the planes, mm -hmm. how they tilt, how they hide behind each other, how they change in, in shape, how they change in, in uh, size and all that. And this helped me a lot to get more the eye for, for portraits and mm -hmm. finding my own mistakes. And when I get lost and I feel like my portraits do not look realistic anymore, I go step back, I paint again exactly that um, that lines of the planes of the hat on top of it and uh, figure out which planes I mistook and what place. Yeah. And it helps me a lot for portraits. Yeah, that's a good recommendation. Uh, everyone else also be aware of those files are still out on the Discord, the art club file that she's talking about. Uh, we don't currently have any new ones coming out because we're just busy at the moment and we haven't, you know, I would say we, Anna hasn't put them together. Uh, but <laughs> the existing ones are still there. Go out there, yes. go through those, catch up with everybody so that when the new stuff comes out, you will be ready to go ahead and just jump right in with them. Uh, another recommendation, maybe a little of an odd one, is if anybody has a sculpting class, like go get some clay or maybe go find a sculpting class uh, or video on YouTube or Skillshare or somebody like that and go through that because that is going to force you to literally have the form in your hands and you have to cut off the planes to make that head. And that will fix in your brain a lot more firmly uh, how the forms work in a three-dimensional space. It also helps you to actually go back to your painting and approach it as a sculptor and not just a painter. Um, because sculpting requires a 3D understanding. You can't sculpt two-dimensionally. Right? Uh, so anyway, uh, that would be the feedback. As far as this image, I this image is basically going to be capped level and skill-wise at your understanding on those other things. So I, I'm not real keen on just saying, change this, change that, uh, because ultimately we're gonna be capped by your understanding of the other subjects. So the main feedback for you would be, go, you know, go do that other stuff. And I do wanna make a note here. You are, you don't have any direct reference for this lady. Uh, looks like you're trying to get some of the aspects of these other people, but like the pose of this other lady, but she doesn't have the same skin tone. What I would do in this case is actually try to make a variation of this lady so that the skin tones are actually closer. You could just copy and paste that, move that over. I'm going to open the curves and I want to move down that mid-tone, bring these up Like if I can get that skin just a little closer to what it would actually be if she had darker skin, then that's one less guesswork that you have to make in your image. All right. So then I can come up here and I can even use my uh, brush to bring the whites, the eyes, and the color guy back up if you wanted to do that. And then with the dark skin tone, what you're going to see is that it usually has more color. So you probably want to come in here and in these areas is where you want to be using more blues, more violets. You see a lot more blues and violets and dark skin. Uh, but the base skin color could be nearer that. And then translate that information over here. Because if you're trying to do this to this, and you don't it's too big of a jump it's hard to figure out what colors to use but anyway uh that would help me out if i were to do it and uh, then i would just know to go in here and try to push some of the other colors i, I could try to do that with a vibrance with the adjustment you just did um people are uh, asking whether there is some way to learn that uh how you did it uh like how to study that well i could 
talk through it real quick. Um, I'm just going to grab the original and oops, copy it, paste it. Now I'm going up to image, adjust, and I'm going to curves. And so on the curves, if you're unfamiliar with it, it is a breakdown of the light and dark values of the image. And you can see the graphs here on either side indicating what uh, the values are. So over here on this end are your darks, your blacks. Over on this end are your whites. And this is literally just a graph showing you how much of which one are in the image. So in this case, there is no whites in the image. You can see that there's nothing there. There is a lot of stuff right within this dark range right there. That would be all of the hair. We can understand that. And then the rest of the skin is just sitting there right in the midtones. Now, one of the major differences between her skin and the skin tone we're trying to get to is the average value of the skin should be a lot darker. Now with curves, it does create a curve. I can grab somewhere on this line and then I can move it. And what that's going to do is say, wherever this normally would be, I'm going to lower it. And you can see that if I grab it from here, I get anything that, let's just do it in the middle. Anything that was a mid-tone, I'm going to now say that that should be down here. It's getting closer to mid-dark. And the further I bring it down, the more that's going to drop that value of that area of the value range. Now, I don't really need to get the darks a, a lot darker. So I'm going to grab some of the, the lighter areas, and I'm going to drop them down towards the mid-tone. And then you can add multiples. So if I want the lights to remain lighter, I can pull one back up, or I could grab one and pull it back up. Uh, and so in this case, you can see where it gets really washed out because I, I've bent it too far there. So I can even that back out and you get something a bit more natural. There you go. Yeah. The thing is, you, you also edit then some other adjustments for color and saturation yeah. and all that. And I guess it is like you learn how different skin looks and you try mm -hmm. to copy that effect, right? It's more like you learn it with experience and with time, right? Yeah, ideally what you would do is you would have another skin tone that you like and you're going to try to match this one to that skin tone. So that you have something to aim for and that's useful because you have something to shoot for and it also is in the pose that you needed yeah uh, and then you look for the other characteristics like darker skin tones have a tendency to pick up more cool colors occasion skin doesn't ref show cool co colors very much uh so you would want to add that twist to it when you start coding to the and I, I think exactly that knowledge where to get that from was, was the question. Right. But I think it's basically like doing a lot of studies, uh, exchanging with other artists, how they did, why they did specific choices, get on mentorings, all that. But yeah, like I have a, a folder here of just skin tones and these can be helpful. I guess Pantone probably put these out. And so you could just flip through these and get an idea of, you know, what kind of color that you would want to match it to. Like here's some guys with some darker skin tones there. And so maybe you go like, I'm looking for more of this skin tone. So try to match her to this and then use more of that information, you know, from your yeah. image. It was a project of a photographer who traveled around the world and tried to find for every skin tone exactly the type of skin mm -hmm. and photograph them. When you Google it, you'll find it. Okay, so. next up is Jake Heaven says, I tried to apply your feedback but had a hard time starting off. I didn't know whether to use what I already made or start anew. How do you decide if it's better to tweak or start over? Well, there's a clear cut answer. Um, if it's not that big of a deal, if it's not fundamentally different, then just tweak what you have. If you're changing the angles of stuff, then yeah, you, you probably have to redraw it. I mean, you're not going to just do a 5% tweak to it and get what you want. 
In this case, you could keep most of the design, most of the idea of it, but yeah, it would need to be redrawn because we're twisting the angle of the body. And whatever you did have to put in, I think that was a good decision. I, it feels a lot more engaging now. I like the 3D form better that she's not straight on to us. But also I had difficulty managing time. I make so many iterations and experiments that don't lead to anything and ends up wasting a chunk of my time. I feel like this is a bad habit. I don't really need to fix it. Uh, any thoughts on this? Well, you always have to go through iterations and things improve through iterations. And in my mind, there's a couple of ways you can approach it. One is you probably need to set a limit to how many iterations you can go through because the goal isn't to create the best image possible. It's to create the best image possible in the time frame given. And those are two different things. So if you've got half a day to do, you know, iterations to figure out how you want to change the clothes, then whatever best idea you come up with in that half a day, you just go with it. Even there might be a better ultimate option out there, that doesn't matter because it's outside of the amount of time you have to spend. So you just go with the best option that you have. And that's the way that we have to work. Um, any thoughts come to your mind on this about kind of, yeah, again, wasting time or getting too off in the weeds and not staying on track time management wise? But the thing is, is it really waste of time? Because when you have an iteration that didn't lead you to anything, then you learned one new thing. You learned what mm -hmm. you don't want. And in order to know what you want, you also need to know what you don't want. And this is exploration. And uh, with everything you draw that did not lead you to the goal, you learned something on how not to approach it, how not mm -hmm. to do it. And um, I think it's not a waste of time. So maybe it's more the mindset you need to change here rather than the method of working. Yeah. Just a thought. Uh, do keep in mind that people get the impression that artists just arrive at the answer. That somehow you're the only one that has all of these failed concepts and iterations. I know that we all think that at some point, and it's just not the case. I mean, I will routinely paint a face multiple times, routinely redesign armor over and over and over, routinely change the lighting, flip-flopping through ideas. And you get the idea that no one else does that because we just see each other's final images. And you're like, well, he must have probably just came up with that, you know, as first or second option. Um, yeah. Do you ever get in that? I mean, I think everybody does, right? You think, oh, I must be the only one that that does this many failed concepts and has to redraw things so many times. I think it is. Yeah, it is also a thing like the more you draw, the more poses you already have done, or compositions, or colors, uh, settings, or whatever or lightings and then you get more a feeling for what you want faster and uh, if you see like i don't know look up an art station uh, when riot artists are posting their art and sometimes they also post like the three to six sketches they they uh, handed into riot before they mm -hmm. decided on one i bet even if if we say okay they just did these these six that they really handed in um it's because they have drawn so many paintings already yeah. that they have things already in their head and they just go for it. And this is just something that comes with time. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it is again, it is time and, and ex exploration and gaining the experience. Yeah, the more that you do it, your intuition will get better. And yeah. your average level of success will improve. So at this point, maybe you do, uh, you go through 10 variations and then one of them really is solid and you go with it. But next year, maybe out of 10, you get 
two or three that are really solid and you could use those and the longer that you do it the the more average good ones you will get out of a batch and you will begin able to either <laughs> you will either be able to trust your intuition and get more or you will learn how to get average ones and sell them as better than they really are because you're better at rendering it's kind of a combination of both. Yep. Let's see. I really think I didn't utilize the time well and wanted to ask if you have any tips or experiences where you really had to rush the work. Any advice when facing a time constraint? Uh, yeah, I definitely have had some times where I had to rush work. Uh, it's been a couple of cases where I thought I had you know, a solid week to do the image uh, until I got the flu and knocked me out for you know three or four days and all of a sudden my 40 hours that i was going to have for this became you know eight or sure. eight or 15. and and when that's the case sometimes you just have to pull long hours uh, i've mentioned it before i like to know exactly what needs to be done and i go down a checklist i make a checklist of everything that needs to be done uh, I also recognize this is not the time for guessing. So it is better for me to go out and spend an hour setting up whatever reference photos that I need. And I'm usually talking, not going out and finding pictures, taking photos. Because I don't have two hours to waste on Google possibly finding what I need. I will just set up my webcam and get the closest that I can. And then I do other things like turn off my phone and try to limit distractions so that I am uh, basically smoothing the path from where I am to where I want to go. Make sure that I have food prepped so that I'm not wasting time going in there and prepping food. Um, yeah. Any ideas with that? Just how to get the most out of a limited amount of time? Yeah. Uh, you have a flow chart uh, on your Teespring. Go and get mm -hmm. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it basically shows you the process. And if you need it like, more in detail and more explained and with examples and a process, then there is also in your shop a very wonderful uh, video on the art creation process that mm -hmm. I can just say is the best thing I've ever purchased in uh, art educational uh, things ever. So guys, consider that um, it's worth uh, the investment. It's investment into your future. So think about it. Yeah, having a good professional workflow so that you know exactly what you need to do at which stage can really hurry the process up. Okay, we do need to talk about this particular set of pieces though, uh, now that we've checked about some of the, the other issues. For this one, I really like that it's very clean. It has a very controlled, sorry, uh, very controlled color scheme to it, uh, particularly with the character over here on the left. You've gone for sort of a almost lightning sort of striped pattern, which is interesting. And with this one, I'm looking to make a couple of adjustments to break up the symmetry, particularly of that main uh, fabric piece that's looping around her. The, I find that just a little, a little too symmetrical, a little too posed. So uh, this is kind of what I was thinking. Some of these changes here, maybe I'll mark over them so you can see it a little cleaner. I'm thinking that this be coming up here and then we're actually seeing the underside of it sooner it sort of loops there and we're seeing the underside over here and then let it be higher or lower on one side or the other personally i would probably have it higher on this side and then let it drop over here and be doing more of this sort of angle to it instead of even across like that would be a little more interesting uh we also need some more distinct folds in some of this uh, flatter pattern. Uh, I would really be looking for this one. It's It makes it look really stiff 
and that it doesn't have any folds. So here, if you can just follow the basic like loops, right? And this comes out here, and then there's one that kind of goes behind that. In your reference image, we can see that here too. Look, look how much this loops and, and twists at the bottom of all of these. This is a really nice pattern. And obviously that's not completely realistic. That's very illustrative, but it helps us know that that's fabric because that's the way fabric behaves. So maybe this is doing that. Whatever it is, you can just give a little squiggly line and you start connecting them up. And that's going to feel more like cloth and it's going to be a more interesting shape to look at. Um, the headpiece, I'm thinking that this is probably really off-centered. And you want it maybe a little off, but I feel like that's getting kind of high. I would expect it to be maybe a little more that range, something on that range. Uh, any thoughts on the standing character? Yeah, so I had the same impression. Um, there are a lot of tensions um, with the clothes and the shoes and the thingy going around. It's all ending at the same height. Um, it's having this balloony look. Um, the folds are not uh, not yet realistic enough. So get some references on how it. Which I I just repeat what you just said. Maybe also consider um, having different kinds of um, like something like silk or mm -hmm. stuff like that. It could be a little bit more transparent. For example, mm -hmm. the one that's going around, or I don't know something that gives a little bit back of the silhouette so you can see the person. Um, body uh, a little bit shining through. Maybe it's a little bit uh, light coming from the back, so we see that mm. the uh, green part of her clothes. Don't know exactly what a skirt or something. It's more transparent. Just play around with ideas like this. I like her fierce look. Mm -hmm. I think the face is done very well. Has a very good expression, and uh, yeah, the general design. I also like it. Has yes. a good energy mm -hmm. she has a very good energy and i like that yeah but with the the clothes i'd i'd give some more time for that mm -hmm. yeah, i would put a bit, a bit more time into that yeah the general design of the way the pieces are coming together and how the attire works i like uh now we just need to get that more natural folding pattern to these and that would really help to sell this and, and elevate overall quality uh for the guy over here a couple of things are going to stand out to me on this that is if you're going to have a straight on portrait you probably don't want to combine that with a straight on lighting because it just flattens out the portrait we don't really get much of a sense of form because everything is completely flat uh, we're not illuminating it from any kind of angle. So I would actually change this up so that maybe he has a fill light a little bit. So you could have some of this light hitting the middle. But primarily you would have a stronger light coming from some side angle uh, that would help bring out some of the forms. And maybe there's... a. And we want to come in here and maybe add a, a side light. Get some saturated in that. And try to bring out what's going on with all this. And what do you think? Would you maybe try to change up the lighting to get a better sense of forms? Or would you try to resolve that in a different way? Yeah, I think the lighting is also... Um, it is it is well, well done um, for... Like the lighting is believable, and I see the, the light source come from and the distance, and she she kept this all at, at a good balance. But as you said, it's flooding and out. It's getting un, uninteresting for us to look at. This is something we want as an illustration in the mm -hmm. book. So, and I want to know more about that character. So we need to add some interest, and um, by using an interesting light, it could even be. I'm a, I'm a total, total sucker for noir light, but you could have an interesting new light setting that people are like, hey, what? What's going on here? I want to want to look at that, you know? 
you don't have to. It can also be a normal side from the light, or it could be lit from below. It could be even another color because he's using some kind of magic that is getting reflected in his face or mm -hmm. anything like that. Um, yeah. Besides that, um, I don't know, for such a close-up in an important portrait, I'd like to have at least some detail to tell me about the culture, an earring or yeah. just something that takes away from him just standing there all all naked and I don't know. Some something interesting. Sometimes one little yeah. thing can add super much interest. Yeah, I'm completely with you. Like they have the uh, the golden mantle thing on the other character. And that can easily just be adapted to being um, a standard attire that they use. So I'd be looking at possibly adding that in. You're just anywhere that's not receiving that direct light, you're going to kind of have that core shadow in between those. And then you can use uh, one of your cooler sort of violet is as one of your front on softer lighting is and we're just trying to expand that palette out and bring out a better sense of the volumes okay. moving on we come to jeremy all right jeremy has a couple of things he says i apologize for saying an incomplete picture uh line art of the male hasori is still visible and rendering is bare bones uh bedtime management on my part hey it happens to all of us completely get it I uh, did my best that I could with the portrait of the female, though, and I'd really uh, appreciate it if you could tell me how to push the render in the facial features. Okay, we'll definitely cover that. Uh, I'll use feedback to complete the pictures. This actually reminds me. Uh, I should have put this on the announcements. Totally forgot to. We have a uh, couple of new rooms on the Discord. Maybe I could just pull oh, the Discord yes. over here. <laughs> You're right. I forgot about that, too. Yeah. So we have a new room here for the art challenge called Before and After. So if you end up finishing your piece after the challenge and it wasn't completed there in the challenge, go put it out in that room because we'd all love to see how the things turn out. Or if you end up doing a uh, changes based on feedback, we'd like to see how that turned out. Uh, a couple of you already put yours out here. You've put the initial concept that was submitted and the final that was submitted. And those are great to see. And you can be inspired by these. And yeah, we just like to, uh, we like to look at art. That's what we do. Uh, then the other one is a new series I'd like to do called How to Improve. And this is where you can submit in one of your images and ask a question, a specific question about how to improve something on that image. Maybe like in this case, how can I improve the rendering of you know, the realism? Or maybe how can I get a certain mood out of this image or whatever the case may be. And I would like to get those images and those questions and record like five or 10 minute videos that show specifically how to address that one question. So make sure that you can go out there. Uh, make sure that you don't forget to go out there and submit something in for that new series. Okay. So uh, for this one, I still really like the lines. Uh, I like the overall design really well. He put in some of the changes that we talked about last time. I remember that the... Does he have the previous one? No, he doesn't have the previous one. Uh, the previous one was just very blocky where all of this kind of came down at the exact same level. And I'd suggest maybe it could flare out at some point to give some variance to that silhouette. He added that in there. I think that's a nice change. I do like the initial colors that he's going with here. But the thing that catches me is you were actually rendering a lot of the black as black. <laughs> um, and we're losing so much of the great detail and lines and design because it's just so dark. Uh, so I'd be pushing that up something like this. You can see that difference there. Um, what is your thought on this? Uh, besides maybe the, the values getting way too dark, 
Uh, do you like the checkered powder and do you like the way that he's handling the colors? Yeah, for me, um, it's already on a level it's tricky for me to uh, give a good critique, I guess. What I just found is that some parts, um, for example, in, in the portrait, because he is not fully rendered, I cannot say um, much about the rendering there. Mm -hmm. uh, some parts are a little bit flat because uh, he missed out the shading there. For example, the hair, uh, mm -hmm. the net of the hair. Um, there is some some sparkles, uh, I see that, some highlights, but still I feel like the top ones, for example, the top golden, whatever these are, um, are too bright, they are all too similar, um, they look a bit, uh, how to say, computer generated, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So they're too perfect. Nothing is that perfect when you do your hair. <laughs> but I'm a woman, believe me. You will never get that perfection over here. So yeah, when she has unnatural. her dreadlocks, they don't look like that. Yeah. So um, it it gets then into looking unnatural. Also, the braids there are super super perfect. You know. And mm -hmm. it's trained here, and it's coming out, this and there, so just to, to loosen that, that up. Uh, the eyes, for example, she has beautiful eyes, but they feel also a little bit flat to me. I'm missing some shade mm -hmm. uh, in there, some, uh, some shadows. Um, so here and there, I see there's super crazy good rendering, like in the lips, they're super believable, and the ears, super believable. And... Um, then there are parts that look like, uh, they, I think there is an art style that does like that, that they had 2D elements combined with 3D rendering. Mm -hmm. And this reminds me of that. I don't know whether it was a French one or like an older art style, but it definitely happened. And uh, this is what, what reminds me of. Yeah. And the skin, um, you probably will not say that, uh, that it needed, but I, if, if I have such a close-up, I try to add some texture, yeah. some, some little pores or something like, like Because we are already at that level, it's nothing that I'd say to someone who's a beginner or someone who who's, um, ha has other issues, but I think at this level, we can add the texture, the reflectivity of the skin, uh, get some material stuff going on. So I think we can enter that subject in this portrait already. What do you think? Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, normally, I would say don't bother with skin texture because you're so zoomed out. Uh, but we are very close on this character and you are going to a very high level of rendering with it. So it does end up feeling a bit too plastic-like because it's too smooth, it's too airbrushed. Yeah. And so you can just come in here and add a little texture just to break it up. Uh, but notice that when you do that, you want to do most of that texture in the lit areas. Uh, skin texture is not hardly visible at all in shadowed areas. The darker it is, the less that you can actually notice the texture. And I would let some of that also be going over this goal just to help uh, kind the bring the two of them together and make it feel like the gold is also not too perfect um, because it is also getting some of that same um, over over smoothness going on with it. Yeah. Uh, with and the... imperfections, like in general, yeah. imperfections everywhere. A scratch here, uh, stray hair there, like be more brave with that. Yeah, if you look at dreadlocks and i've had to do dreadlocks multiple times over the years uh it they are not really clean <laughs> they've got mm -hmm. little hairs that just come out all over the place and it's it's a messy sort of thing even when it's it's tidy on a small scale it's messy and it's got lots of little hairs kind of breaking up the silhouette so we want to soften that out we also have to remember that this as a whole needs to feel like it has a volume to it. Right now, the left side, right side, top side, bottom side all have the same values. 
there was no sense of volume to any of this. And that's not very helpful. So at least if we can just kind of pick the top and say, well, the top is a little more lit than any of the other directions, then I want to lighten that up and, and let that feel like it has a little more sense of form to it. Uh, I'm with you with some of the gold um, details that they are maybe a little too sharp and they were all a little too bright. Uh, for instance, we're looking at the earring. The earring is pretty much a perfect circle towards us. Uh, it would be more useful if that was actually turned at an angle a little bit. And with gold, we want to start bringing in some other colors. We want those warm oranges, sure. But we also want some greens added in there. People usually forget how much green tone you can get in some golds. And then anywhere the gold reflects back up, a lot of times any reflected light on gold is going to be extra warm. So that's where you're going to get more of the oranges. This has color variance and it keeps yeah, so there we can get some more of that. And maybe instead of the whole thing being really bright, you just have most of it towards that tone, and then you have a you know, bright spot there. That way, that's not taking up so much of the bright value. Uh, same thing for these back here. I'm feeling like maybe these would have more of a uh, darkened pattern to them right along there and then the ones on the sides can be picking up some of the bounce light from the environment and becoming more cool or grayed out that are facing that way and like those could be a little darker they're almost in a core shadow area there and then the ones facing the most towards us can be brighter but we do want some variance to that. So maybe the ones going down could be a little bit darker. And then once it gets back up underneath, again, they can begin a little darker, a little duller. And we don't necessarily even need them that, uh, that sharp. It's okay to have uh, some more lost edges, softer edges, painted edges, as it gets back into the shadowy areas. And then the sharper stuff can be left towards the, uh, the lit area. Here too, we can be getting up to maybe some other kind of greenish tones as it's picking up some of that top light. What you mentioned, which is remembering that the eyeball itself is a sphere, getting some shading on that. Some uh, cast shadow from the eye lashes down on there. I'll make that feel a little better. And then if it was me, I would be pushing the color a little bit on this. Uh, I'll try it with an overlay, see if that gets what I want. One or two. And trying to get a little more color variation to some of the skin. Again, we talked about some of those cool colors being picked up by darker skin tones. Adding some of that in there. Can you elaborate why you went for overlay this time and not one of the other modes? Because we just had a talk about that. Uh, because overlay is going to shift the colors, but it's not going to shift the values as much. Oops. Um. <laughs> I knocked over some. Yeah. There we go. Let me check my camera. I probably moved my camera <laughs> yeah my, my computer is on a battery pack but my foot caught the cord that runs the battery pack okay so what i'm wanting to do is only tint uh the the subject towards a color and i want to have a little control over the values as well which is what overlay is going to do Hard light would move the value too much. Color would move yeah. the color, but it wouldn't be able to move the value. And so in this case, what I'm trying to do, I think uh, overlay would get me the clue. 
Uh, but I am sending it down at like 30% because I don't want to have too too much movement on it. Uh, and here I'm just, again, trying to add some more color variants, uh, looking at adding some more violets around the eyes, right around there. I'm um, reaching to more of the soft kind of blue violet for these brighter sections that you already have there, here. Uh, then probably something, I may go to, let's say, I try a hard light layer. There are references. Can I'm, you show um, the color that you picked, like in the in the little window? Like oh, you can it see up? it there on my, you can see it right here is the ones I'm using. I mean, like when you click into into it, into the color, so that you see how much it's saturated and so on. Because when people take, um, Often when they use such overlay stuff, they use a little bit too saturated colors and mm -hmm. then it like goes crazy. And uh, so it it was always a help for me to figure out on what color to go for on the layer. Because this is the second thing you have to learn, which colors work for each layer, <laughs> which one are too much, which one were not enough, uh, which don't have the effect I want and so on. So. Uh, so this is a hard light layer at about 50%. I'm using a soft teal color. And mm -hmm. I just want to expand the, the palette out a little bit. Get up a little bit more. This light isn't going to be very um, prominent. There's not going to be that many things lit by it. So it's okay if it's a little more saturated. I want some of that side light to be catching the other color. I'll bring out some of that. Nah, that's going to be too much shadow back in there. You're not going to get too much of that. Uh, you could be catching it down here on the hand, though. Maybe we add a little side light to some of these knuckles, that sort of thing. And then we want to make sure that we're treating all of this hair as a unit. But I need to lower a lot of that set. All of this is basically being treated as either a, a thin cone or kind of a, a widening cylinder. And then you can come in and pull out any like cast shadows. You can have a little cast shadow from the, the netting of hair over top of the rest of it. Probably some a little bit. Well, maybe catching in the eye, and then see about having pop a bluish tone, a little more blue. The interesting thing for me was to figure out um, why the edge um, of a face in some situations is a light edge instead of a dark one, because usually, like he drew, when you have a light source coming from front mm -hmm. and the object recedes into the background and turn the planes turn away from us, you would draw it darker and darker and darker and darker, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But um, then this, uh, I think it was called angular reflection. You there had you it go. in one of your videos mm -hmm. where um, you see like a plane that is usually a very large plane, but it is at such a very, uh, vertical angle to your eyes, to your eyesight, that it starts to reflect all the light um, into just this little small room. It's so hard for me to explain it in English, that you're much better. And that's why you get this, 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 this highlighted effect. Like you have it um, when you look at a river, when you look down, directly down from a bridge or something, you see the ground. But the more you look back into the in, uh, direction of a horizon or something, the more and more you see the sky reflected in this 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 light. You know, this the, the water looks white at some points, and uh, I don't mean the foam or something. It's really the reflection turning this white, and that's the same effect we have with that skin here because the plane turns away from us and is nearly vanishing, and at that point it catches a lot of light that gets reflected into our eye. And that's why we have that bright edge and not a dark one, as I also drew 
all the time when I did my portraits <laughs> when I started out. So I don't know whether it's called Fresnel effect, Jeremy. I'm sorry, but Clint, you you named it angular reflection, or what did you call it? You I, had a talk. Yeah, about it's commonly known by two different names: uh, angular reflection and the Fresnel effect. And if you look that up, uh, Fresnel, it's actually uh, spelled yeah. F R E N S E L, named after a guy named Fresnel. He is the one that developed the. Uh, Fresnel lenses used at lighthouses to focus light. Uh, right now mm. I'm just softening out some of these designs. Otherwise they're so sharp, it's just almost distractingly sharp. Yeah. And what Anna is talking about is that the closer your viewing angle is to the angle of the object, the more that object will appear mirror-like, the more that it will reflect. Now, it doesn't necessitate that the object itself is very reflective, in this case, skin. But the angle that we're looking at that skin is very similar to the angle of the object. So you can think about it like uh, skipping rocks on the water. Everybody skipped rocks on the water, right? Say this is the surface. You can't skip a rock if you throw it straight into the water, you know, if you just throw it straight down. All you have to do is go at it at a glancing angle. Now the light works the same way. So if you're looking across here and the light is coming like this, some of that light is going to come down and hit that surface and it's going to bounce back up into there. It's not going to go into the water or be absorbed by the object. It's going to hit and bounce back up. And you know, the very exact same thing happens even like on this phone, right? If I look straight into the phone, I get some reflection from it. But if I angle it like this, and you're looking at it like that, it practically becomes a mirror because your viewing angle is very similar to the viewing angle of the object itself. And that's why we sometimes get uh, like this sheen of light along the edge. It's not actually bounce light, it's angular light bouncing off the skin into your eyes. Uh, that's what I would do in order to kind of push this further. I, I think the overall drawing is fantastic. It just doesn't have the color variation and it doesn't have the expounded forms that we need in order to really push it up to be more realistic and overall just a bit more engaging. Okay, we got to be moving on. Beautiful piece there, Jeremy. Uh, hope to see you uh, jump into some more stuff in the future. Louie is up next. And Louis, I, again, thank you for actually doing the Ogre Moth. Uh, Ogre Moth was one of the options of the races <laughs> to do. And uh, Louis was the only one that, that chose to do them. Uh, and here we're looking at a kind of an uber ogre, a four-armed ogre that is more hairy, that lives in usually colder climates and has a somewhat simian style face to them. Uh, the design really didn't change from the last one. Uh, it took into account some of the feedback I gave as far as making it a little more lumbering, moving the head down, and giving it the, the, the heavier brow to make it a little less intelligent looking. Uh, give it some of the chained bolos. I like that. I like the idea of the chain wrapped around the rocks. And that would be his mid-range weapon uh, to slow people down. Then he would just go up there and club them to death. So uh, my initial impression is very good with this. And to me, this one hit as needing basically the same sort of treatment as we just saw in the portrait, which is we need some more color variation in this. Right now it's very kind of one tone on everything. Uh, it just looks like the color pass on a black and white layer. So what about you? Or would you look to do some more changes? Uh, or you do you think maybe color variation would be towards the top of the list? Yeah, you took my only comment I had. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the color, yeah. Uh, it could be like um, it, within the skin, some color variations would be nice. Um, could also be a light source like um, a fire or something shining behind him from behind him, so it gives a nice warm moonlight or something. 
I mean, monochromatic um, might be wanted for this piece, I don't know, or at least like very close colors only. If you don't want to put any super opposed oppose color to that, I think just some variations in the skin would be cool. Some more brownish, greenish tones, something like that, a bit of yellow somewhere, um, especially in the face also, because I think as the human skin in the face is also maybe for him that where you have blood vessels underneath, it changes a bit the color, where you see them through some some purples, some yellows, as as we all have in our skin. And mm -hmm. it would just add to the realism. I mean, I I enjoy it as it is in a book. I just think, wow, that's cool piece. Um, and I think you you got everything down you need. It's just like little tweaks, I'd say. Um to make to push it even further. I'm I'm really interested now what you will do with it, Tim. Oh let me see. I see I see. Yeah, I did I a couple of little color variances to it uh, before stream. Uh, I can turn those on and off, and you can see the, the change yeah. there. Uh, now, the thought process here was you want some color gradients across the skin. And what Anna was talking about, places where the blood, the capillaries in the skin are going to be very close to the surface, or there is going to be a lot of them, are going to allow those area of the skin to become warmer. So here I went in and particularly added some to, uh, let me get me to my normal layer, added some purples around the eyes, underneath the eyes, making more kind of ugly. We're also looking at the ears. The ears are always a place where it gets warmer. Uh, whatever this big goiter neck thing is, I thought that probably could use some color there as well. And you also want to hit up joints, your elbows, uh, your knuckles. These are all going to be warmer spots. So I have the hands getting warmer, and that is averaged overall as well. My hands getting warmer, elbow areas getting warmer. And then I put a little bit around the underarm areas and just the bottom of the belly, not because they generally get that way, but because they just needed something to break those up a little bit. Uh, some other variations are added into the hair so that some is more gray, some is more warm, some is more cool. Uh, it just gives more of a matted sort of messy appearance because there's variations to it. Uh, going past that, adding some dark blood stains makes him feel more primal uh feels like he just <laughs> you know <laughs> beat the crap out of something uh but he's got some blood you know still stained on his big club he's got some blood spots across his arms that he didn't clean off a little bit there on his beard uh around his face and that's i feel like just with a pass like that you're in pretty good shape. Um, th this is nearly finished right here. You may want to go in and just add, I would probably come in here and add maybe just like a little hair across the belly to break up that smoothness. Uh, or, and or, coming in here and also putting in some, some scars uh, can be really great on a character like this. Get some scar tissue sort of going across, right? And these can make it feel like he has more of a history, that he's gone to the battle with something before. And that, again, gives you just a little more history of who this guy is. And it's kind of cool to look at. Yeah, see, I, I feel really good about that. I, I, I think you've got a really cool character. And uh, Louis, please go ahead and do just some of this color variation there. And... Post that final. I'd like to see which direction you take it. Uh, any final thoughts on this one? Yeah, I like the changes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy with it. <laughs> Looks so cool. We also need to see a little uh, variation between that loincloth and his legs. I might brighten his legs up just a little bit because we are losing uh, the difference there between the anatomy body and cloth itself. So that would be my last little put on there. Oh, 
Uh, one other thing, and this can work for this particular scene, which is a little side light. I probably would not resist putting a little side light over here. You got actually a little bit right there on his mouth. I think I would come in here and just put more of that so that that light can be hitting the side of that arm and let that and his belly in particular stand out. We need a little more definition between I don't get uh, we need a little more definition between these objects, particularly of that hand. Uh, we could even let some of the chain be catching some of that light across there. On this one, we're not going to be uh, missing, uh, uh, noticing that arm, right? We don't want to miss out on what's going on there because that is a defining factor of the character that would give him an extra attack uh, to have that extra limb. So there, that would be just like a little side light that helps pull out some of those forms and wouldn't take very long to, to accomplish. Cool stuff, cool stuff. Definitely. Melanie is up next. Uh, Melanie went and did a Zez, which is a fungus, mushroom, uh, melon sort of creature, an elemental, neither good nor bad. It's just a nature creature. And also did some of the Hasori, which is the human variant. Uh, after my low concept submission, I now did much better with the time management. You undoubtedly got a lot done between the concept and this one. Uh, the concept wasn't very fleshed out, uh, but this one is really put a lot of time into it. Quite happy with the overall results. I think you should be. Uh, the overall results are very, very good. However, I would appreciate some feedback on the colors as they feel okay, but don't exactly light a spark for me personally. Okay, yeah, we could chat about the colors. You'd also like to talk about lost and found edges in the future. Might be outside of what we really need in this case, but he said, I love the render of the snake. I'm not sure what snake you're referring to. Oh, in the reference? A snake in one of the references? Mm, a snail, maybe? I don't know. Maybe she meant snail? I think she meant a snail. Where's the snail? There's a snail. Or, am I in the wrong Oh, there? oh, in the I reference snail. Like okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Snail. Yeah, I like that as well. Uh, I guess. Melanie's probably trying to go for that uh, wet snail sort of texture to it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, initial impression is really pretty strong with me on these. Uh, they've got nice clean renderings, good pops of color, uh, very unique uh, Zez designs. Uh, but once you start us off, what is your initial impressions of these? Yeah, I was also very impressed uh, with with the rendering and the ideas and also the color choices. I like how you can tell that both of um, the humans are um, connected to each other. She um, had very, very great ideas for, I really, I'm sorry, I don't know the creatures. <laughs> Of the shroom guy. <laughs> Zest, was it Zest? Something like that. Um, I think for the, if, if you really want more the look of the snail kind of reflectivity, I, for the, for the Zest creature, I'd say it is the problem if you have too many highlights mm -hmm. all over the place and very, uh like the edges also a little bit transparent and all that it will start to look a little bit more like jelly mm -hmm. rather than uh the snail itself so the snail really has a lot of texture if you go in there and just specific parts um it's like you can draw a line through these highlights it is really just one specific angle 
where we receive the highlight and everything else is not having that highlight. Um, maybe try that for the head of your dress um, in order to get that look. Yeah, what you're really trying to go for here, Melanie, is a appearance of wetness. And in order to get that, what you want to do is get the initial base color. And you want to make it a little darker than it would normally be. Uh, you're used to seeing this, right? You get just hair. And you get the hair wet, what happens? The hair looks like it gets darker. And so you see a transition of the values where the value range changes because you've just added a modifier to that subject. It no longer lights or highlights the way that it normally would because of the coating of the water on it. So normally what you have is this going from light to uh, from dark to light. And it has a fairly smooth transition throughout. I want to get it lighter and lighter and going through one of these, and then it gets up to the highlights. Here. Now, this is going to be different once it gets wet. What we should be seeing is that it remains in the midtones and the mid darks longer. And then it skips the mid light and it just jumps to light and there is less of it. So it's going to be more of this sort of value rate. And that's what you see over here on the snail and that's what gives that impression. There isn't any mid lights. There is darks, mid darks, mids, and then it jumps to white and the white is more limited. So we got to make that sort of change. And so I was trying to come in here and do that most of this needs to be getting darker. And you would be getting some of this reflection there on the top. But you're not going to have as much of that high reflection as you are putting in. Be getting some of it kind of on this way. Most of it is going to be in this mid-tone range, darkened down a little bit from what its normal range is. Uh, then when you come in and add the lights, uh, you're going to have what she said, which is you're going to have a little less of them. And they're going to be really, really bright. They're not really going to transition from that value to this value. It's just going to jump to that. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. That make sense? So yeah, totally. That might get a little, a little closer than watching those. Uh, mm -hmm. Same thing down here. If you were trying to do it with these, like all of this, you could drop down the value of it so that it's towards the midtones as well. And then you'd come in and add your highlights to it. And you could get more of a glossy feel off of those, but you would also need some of the bounce light hitting that because it becomes more reflective along those edges. Uh, overall though, I, I think those, the design works really well. It's a really unique and kind of cool creature that uses a lot of unusual shapes. Um, it almost has more of an undersea vibe, which is kind of cool. Fan of that. I, and talking about the colors though, I do find it interesting that as completely different as these are, mushroom people and desert humans, that they use all the same colors. Did, did you notice that, Anna? Do you think that's a good call? Or would you think that maybe they should have a different color scheme? Yeah, no, um, I, I'm with you there. So you could just also play around. If, if you don't wanted to do it like, we just said you can also play around with it a little bit. Like it's so easy in Photoshop to change, mm -hmm. to change up colors and see new sets and all that. And you just make a mask uh, with a lasso tool, and you can have changes just for the head, just for the body, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm totally with you there. I I do the same. Yeah, so I just push it over there to more of a violet side. Personally, I think I would go with 
more of that range. And the violet's just such an unusual but kind of cool color. And so you have mm -hmm. that sort of green violet vibe. And that way they're you're not just using the same color scheme for both uh races. Mm -hmm. Uh do just would the same technique for wet be the same for a traditional art as well? Yes it would. Yeah, that's just a principle of values and colors and lighting that it doesn't matter what uh, media you're working with. Okay. Uh, overall, yeah, I, nothing is particularly standing out to me like, oh, I'd really think you ought to change this with it. Uh, the, uh, adjusting some of that color would be my main thing on that creature. Um, Uh, looking at the Hasuri, uh, looking at those, uh, anything that stand out to you on these guys? Uh, almost tricky for me. Um, I I like the overall look, as I said before. I think it's a cool pose. I like how the uh, one leg recedes into the background and she loses a little bit of contrast there. That gives us depth and she handled that well. She handled the um, the um... ah, it's getting late for me. The no, I got it. It's not silk, but like his clothing, mm -hmm. the folds um, of it. She handled that very well. Drapery. Oh gosh, now I have it. <laughs> Drapery. <laughs> really well. Guys, um, English is not Anna's first language. So yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's doing I'm good. Sorry. She's doing good. No, no, sorry guys. So please don't leave because of that. Um hmm. there is something I feel like his his body, uh, his chest looks kind of bumpy, like round, like it's also super round about him. And yeah, let's let's talk about that for a second. That was one of the things that was catching me as well. And I'm thinking it's it looks like his shoulders are further forwards than his chest is. Because you're allowing the forms of the shoulders to actually bend down over the chest, and it makes it look like he's doing this sort of thing. So what we want to do is realize that you don't have a big drop right there. You have there is a bit of a drop there as it goes towards the the armpit, but largely speaking, this just transitions into that. Uh, so we want to make sure that it feels like this is more of a flat plane, and then it starts getting down to a crux down here a little more. Uh, and this would I think help the chest feel like it's coming forwards a bit and maybe the the arms are also it's kind of throwing the the arms off as well that i, I think the pecs are coming down too low mm. you want to bring the pecs up and then you can actually see a little of the rib cage under the pec the pec doesn't come all the way down to the, the bottom of the rib cage I would be moving that up a little bit, uh, then letting it come up and transition to there. Get some of the light there. We can see a little bit of the rib cage underneath it. Um, that up a little bit, and then letting that come over. Yeah, letting... more flat there. It's not so round also. Yeah. yeah, more flat across the top of the chest here. Yeah. And we may want to actually extend the arms a little bit further. It feels like the arms little too short or they're also on the same level of height you know like they're the, the yeah. legs are so dynamic and they are super frontal and super in this uh yeah straight to us maybe a little bit like not so slightly whatsoever uh one shoulder coming more towards us being lower being higher whatever just to add some some counterbalance for the hips uh, I'm looking at adding a little more of a consistent shadow tone across the character. Uh, everything is just sort of sort of lit, sort of shadowed, uh, but it's not real determined right now. 
So I'm coming in here and just trying to connect that together so that it's either shadow or lit. And then it doesn't feel like everything's so rounded out as much. Uh, then also for this, we can come in here and start adding a little of that cool tone that dark skin tones has a tendency to pick up across the upward facing parts of the skin just to help develop some of those forms because we're losing like a lot of sense of the form in the, the face there as well. The upward facing plane there on the face can be catching some of that. And then you can even be adding some of it into some of the cloth as well. A little color to add. Uh, I'm with somebody common said they really like the uh, the transparent pants. I think that's nice. That sort of variation of some cloth is opaque and some of it has the light yeah. transitioning through it. Uh, that feels good to me. Uh, particularly like the rendering of the, the lady's face, some of the colors and the forms going on there. That's one of the reasons I used it on the uh, episode title image. Uh, but... I feel like there is some some tangents going on with some of this cloth and stuff around the hand. Uh, does any of those catch you, Anna? Yeah, um, like for example, the the face of the baby and and uh, the drapery around it. It feels I don't know at what place, but it feels like it's cutting in a little bit into into the baby's. Um, neck mm -hmm. or something maybe um like it would be better to have it a little bit more going over the face of the baby as well or layering on top uh at some point not sure i would have to to try it out and yeah. uh then we have like the drapery that's coming down is having a little curve uh, like around the the underneath the ear of the baby and exactly at where it turns, mm -hmm. the other part is coming down. So it was hard to as to read um, what which part is in front, which part is behind, which is folding over the other. Uh, that uh, caught me here a little bit. Yeah, uh, I had to zoom up on it and try to figure out which piece is connected to the which piece. Like we have this fold here. And that kind of threw me off. I didn't know whether those were the same or uh, or what was connected. Uh, this piece really kind of bothers me in that it just seems like dangerous for the baby. Mm -hmm. That it's coming over here and then it's looping underneath its neck and holding its neck up. Uh, I would expect this would become this piece. And then it would loop underneath the baby and then come back around. And I kind of understand that. Uh, I don't know the point of this one. I mean, it's coming off of her hood. Is, she, is that just this green piece that she's using to cover the baby over? Uh, I would still kind of expect to see some folds here. Where I expect the baby's body is actually going to be here. But I don't have any indication that any of the folds back here are helping, you know, indicate that. Uh, so that would be my big thing as far as just how some of these, this cloth is sort of wrapping around. And if we can cut down on the number of tangents. Uh, having her holding the kid, though, that works for me. The general colors are working for me. Uh, I love these cool tones that you've thrown into the face there. I would want to see some of those just to help tie things together down here on this hand as well. So on the hand, in the shadow side, it would be picking up a lot more of that color just to help it keep a little more consistent. Uh, the other thing is we've got this bright yellow back here coming through some of the cloth. We have the bright yellow there across the hair. But on the side with that yellow light, we don't actually have the green tinted towards that yellow. So I would suggest coming in here and letting some more of that be tinted towards the yellow so that it's more, that red can be getting more light. 
Anything else stand out to you on this? No, I really like Han, how she rendered it. Mm -hmm. it really cool. Mm -hmm. And um, the smile on the face of the mother. I just like the atmosphere she created. And it's very, very believable. And I like also the, the rendering, like with some painterly uh, edges mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, I really liked, liked it. Yeah, uh, just overall, she's got a real likable sort of look to her. She, like you said, very believable as a character. Good job. Excellent stuff, Melanie. Olivia is up next. Seaver also as it goes. Uh, redrew the concept for the full body based on the crit from two weeks ago. I uh, didn't have time to finish up with the patterns of jewelry on either piece, but hope to finish them in the next few weeks. Okay, yeah, you, those are minor details, and you can uh, take care of those at a later time. Uh, just looking at the concept, yeah, the earlier concept, they were just a little plain. They were just kind of a little too static with their pose, and so we talked about trying to add some variation to that. I think this pose is way more interesting. Uh, it's still a simple standing pose, but you've got a little turn to the body. You've got the body facing one way, the face facing another way. And as I've said before, if the character isn't moving, see if you can move some of the fabric or the other elements around it. That's exactly what you did. And so it gives a nice sense of motion and uh, life to it, even though the character isn't in an action pose. Uh, the color scheme, I think overall is working pretty well because it's very harmonious. It works with itself. And, and the characters, she, frankly, she's just pretty badass. And uh, I think that's really important for this kind of image. Oh, do you want to lead it off? Any particular thoughts here on uh, these characters? Um, yeah, I, I really like um, the how she put detail in specific places, but not everywhere. So she knows where to let a little bit the eye rest and give us give us a pause from all that information, you know, like the trousers and the cape are pretty basic, but they look good. And mm -hmm. they're amazingly rendered. I love uh, all the folds everywhere. They look realistic. Um, I love the pose. Um, but this kind of... What was uh, interesting to me, I mean, it might, this is a style thing, but um, her rendering of the clothes and the body are so realistic to me that I felt her eyes look like a little bit anime to me. Mm. Mm -hmm. there, there's just something about them that these eyes don't fit the rest of the style, but it also looking cool still so i'm not <laughs> of much help here i'm sorry i just like <laughs> so maybe you could push you could always push colors like in the shadows the cool some blues but um as on that and i'm sorry you're you're on your own on this one <laughs> We could push some of the reflection fold there in her eye just to help that pop out a little bit more. This is another one where overall the entire face is getting quite one value. And so we probably want to play up some either fill light or second light and help bring out some of those forms. Now you've already established a little bit of a cool light going on over there. And is a little big one. And the same uh, or similar sort of thing as we did on the other one, which I'm going to come in here. I need a dark. And I'll bring out some of these forms. We want to establish more of the planes of face over here. And we can do the same sort of thing on this side by adding in light. Maybe coming, bouncing up from underneath. And 
And so there we can just glance at it and have a lot better sense of the forms going on in the head and pulling in some more color. Uh, I feel like some of the cloth, I feel like the cloth has a good fold pattern to most of it, but it's perhaps too contrasty. So I would suggest coming in here and actually lowering the contrast, especially some of the stuff that are across the chest area and letting that have a lower value range uh, since it doesn't have any direct light on it. And that can be more helpful. Uh, if you do have this hair getting kind of reddish, then that is going to be more visible. We have the chance to use a bit more brighter color along the edges where it's going to be thinner. So there's going to be less uh, hair to block the light. And so any areas where it's a little thinner, we don't want to just make it lighter. We want to make it more saturated as well. And that's a nice color pop towards the end there, or maybe it gets a little thinner towards the bottom. So uh, this arm, I would put a bend in it. It's just too, uh, it's too static, it's too straight. And so I'd just be looking at, you could probably just Frankenstein this, cut, paste, twist angles a little bit so that you have more of a back, you know, here, and then come forward. So more of an elbow bend there, get a bit more natural, get the hand down here. And this... Pose feels like she's got the she just kind of has her hips forwards, so spine is sort of doing a dip back hip forward sort of thing, and that's cool. Except for we want to play that up with the pants down here. This having an interim cut to it is sort of defeating that. So here we want to go with more of a line that's going to help establish. Continue that same thing here. We want to be using some curves that helps tell that uh, dynamic that you're going with. And here we want to do kind of the opposite. We want to make sure that some of this is coming out and then dipping back to follow the the layback there. And if possible, if we move this arm back, getting to see just a little bit of the uh, the inside of that waist so that we have a better indication of the pose going on there and what's going on with those hips. So some light changes there that might help uh, the overall pose be a little more consistent and a little more dynamic. Uh, this cloth also, uh, cloth itself not a problem, but the way that it's folding this white one over here is like right following the same curves as the yellow one. And the top of this, even though it's blowing, is hanging straight down. And I would expect this to be more, more wild uh, with all these little fringy bits sort of flying around. And averagely, our white cloth can be brighter. Then that gold, the gold cloth, or yellow cloth, is averagely darker in value. We want to make sure that this is standing out and that's kind of flying around. Uh, uh, as far as the portrait of the guy, uh, any thoughts here? I'm feeling like maybe the values overall getting a bit dark. Um, yeah, I really liked uh, also the design here with the uh, ears that are um, going or having this transition into the gold tones. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I again had the first, you look first at the eyes, and I felt like something, especially with his left for us, right? I um, seemed a bit off um it might be just the shading it might be the the size i'm not sure but it feels like they're not matching the eyes at the moment for me um yeah and i don't know uh, at what stage with rendering uh, she is whether she finished or not 
I just feel like the hair of the beard um, doesn't look like hair to me. Um, but it might be a kind of beard hair that I've not seen before, so I'm not sure um, whether there's some style where you have like, um, where you just twirl, twirl your beard hair, hairs into each other and have this mass of hair then. I don't know, it just looks doesn't look like a normal beard to me. Um, and the the um, the hair braids, I don't know what they're called, they're um, very thin for this kind of braids. Mm, if it's mm -hmm. meant to be single hair, it's too thick. So either go for really thick ones, I'd say, or for or normal hair. So one or the other. I think they're too thin. Yep. Yeah, thickening those up a little bit could be good. And just trying to come over here and maybe. develop some of these forms. Yeah. Now, dark skin uh, also behaves a little more like uh, a wet material in that it has a tendency to jump from mid darks or mid tones to lights and bypass a lot of the other values. I'm trying to get those eyes to pop a little bit. Don't forget that you can have a decent amount of fill light and not break up the shadow and light and shadow pattern. And if we've got that red hair going on with the beard, I feel like we probably need to push that further in order to sort of address what you were saying, which is we're just losing a lot of that beard in here. And it's okay if, you know, the beard gets reddish. That, that's fine. But we probably need to make that clearer and also, we want to soften up this edge a little bit more. Separate these out a little bit. You can be a little illustrative about it. If it's not 100% realistic that it would get that light on that spot, uh, sometimes you can do it anyway just because we don't really need that value at that location. Looking at adding a little more of some darker kind of blue violet tones around the facial hair area. And coming back with some of the warm violets kind of around the eyes, giving a little hair. Well, getting some of that color variation in there. And pop of a little color to from that bounce light here. You can have that core shadow there by the brighter edge light. Anything else you do to help wrap this up? Um, if you want some more details, there sometimes they have in their beards, like maybe also something like a golden pearl or something like that. Could be a nice touch. If you had something, uh, not strangled up, but braided into his beard, mm -hmm. something like that. Could be also an idea, but I think it would convince me already as it is okay well we'll wrap it up on them Livia thanks so much for uh, sending those in great seeing that and I think that was excellent progress especially on the uh, the standing lady he's a cool character Sebastian we're looking at now uh, Sebastian also doing the Hasuri 
So to try to incorporate your feedback into the designs also felt like there was a lack of details or things that would imply more story. So I aimed to add those as well. I wanted to use bright colors and patterns in the design, but wasn't sure how to without drawing too much attention again. And uh, so yeah, consistent colors and designs used across both of these. Got the female standing, the male portrait, and on the whole, I think that's a good read. I like some of this, uh, I'm not sure what that pattern is, kind of the checkered colored fabric. Uh, then you have that same sort of stitching design going on at the bottom of the skirt. Uh, that's nice. And with the guy, on both of them, you're using uh, kind of a, a dash, almost fish spots sort of design of the gold on the skin, which is a nice variation. We haven't really seen that on the others. I, I think this is on a good path, but I'm with him that maybe pushing some of the colors right now is sort of sitting for me in this mid area where it's a little safe and it's not really committing to anything in particular. Uh, how does this hit you? Yeah, I also thought it's uh, really good uh, work. There's a lot of time you spend for this. Uh, you have a lot of details. Um, I like the idea you had. Just for me, it felt a little bit too busy because there is detail everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like in, uh, she has a lot of stuff and braids and uh, patterns, different ones, and each of her arm rings has a different pattern and colors. And it is just a bit too much to my taste. And mm -hmm. um, I'd unify some stuff and turn down some details. The shoes look very flat. They don't have received a core shadow, if I see it right on my screen. So there is just nearly just one uh, bright light all over the shoes. Um, so they're the flattest part. I think um, around the head, she has um, put the, uh, no, he, Sebastian, sorry, has put the light already um, more realistic than on the lower parts. And um, for the drapery on her hat, it, because of this asymmetrical wave this this does, I'm a bit confused because it it gives her a, a weird hat shape. I know it's just the drapery that's flying, but then either have it maybe like um, transparent or something that you see still the hat underneath, or make it a little bit flatter as you have for the guy. It is just looking a bit off to me. Like it looks like she has um, a weird hat hat shape on top, and yeah, yeah, the um, way it kind of puffs up on top of the head. Is that what you're looking at? Yeah, it's a bit bit high, or make it like like as I said, transparent, and you see still the hat shape underneath. That you just not like, Ooh, what what's with her hat? You know, that was my first impression. Like, oh, what's going on with her hat? Um, then my brain tells me, oh, it's just a drapery, but mm -hmm. first we need cells, you know, that's the thing. Yeah, that were basically my first thoughts. Yeah, I would probably tone that down as well and go for more of the headpiece that stays lower so that you maybe just have a little bit of break there uh, then this is being held tighter against the head or the in the actual white I'm gonna have that tighter against the head uh, otherwise drawing too much attention up there we can take that down a little bit uh, I was checking whether if we couldn't just use a, a soft shadow across all of it to help kind of tie some of the colors and the uh, the detail together. And I'm with you that 
maybe there's a little too much detail in some of this. Like this white fabric having the, the red patterns on it. Maybe you could just do the red patterns like along the edges or there's just a couple of stripes, not necessarily stripes everywhere. And here I'm trying to clarify her silhouette a little bit because right now we've got a lot of bad pairings of values. We have a lot of dark against dark pairings of values. That Uh, so we have a lot of dark things against other dark things against other dark things all through here. And it gets just kind of busy. So that's what I was playing with this other one. Like if there was some light maybe coming through the back side of this fabric, and we could use that and kind of justify that maybe that arm is kind of silhouetted more, like all of that's kind of in shadow. We have the silhouette of that bag, and then you have some light. I mean, down here, that helps clarify all that information. That's not as difficult to uh, make out. Some of that same color can be added up here. Like, oh, and so where there's light kind of coming through the back of it, maybe you've got that, and this way we can separate out some of this. Uh, and then we, we still want to bring out some of the volumes. So you could have like the upward facing ones areas are more maybe cyan and then the downward facing ones are maybe more blue or, or, or violet in their tone. And this is where we can bring in some extra color. And because these are all sort of playing together, you can actually change the color of them and not get too far off. Uh, now we could actually make this brighter blue. And that's going to be okay because we've got some other nice colors to play with. Reds there. Uh, that's how I'm thinking to take it. And I think adding some of that shadow would be an important way to, to go about it. Uh, you'll actually notice that in a lot of these sort of D&D style images, of the full characters, a lot of them don't use uh, direct light on the character like you have it because it gets so busy and it's so difficult uh, and time consuming to render. Most of them are actually rendered in shadow or in soft light. And that's probably the answer what you want there. Uh, as far as this guy, I think he has a good look to him. It looks like you used a pretty direct reference of this fella over here. And I but we are losing again a lot in that that region here in the shadows. You might be able to tell that on a computer monitor you can pick out some of it, but if you were to print that, you'd almost be able to tell nothing that was going on there. On this case, I'm kind of surprised that the photographer was even able to get that because he has particularly dark skin and they photographed it against a white background. And there is a limit to how much tolerance of brightness and shadow that a camera can handle. But we don't have to be constrained that much. We could come in here and add more brightness down in there. And that's what I would do is just get some dodge, bring some of those values up in that area. Uh, what else would you be looking to do or, or tweaking on this guy? Um, yeah, I had the same thoughts that um, his forehead, nose, and the one cheek are a little bit, um, how to say, they could use this this um, more bluish kind of color, mm -hmm. um, because as you said, it's like a typical um, reflection color that dark skin takes on, and um, yeah, the skin is also again a bit busy in texture because we have everywhere um, the same size of spots and very tiny spots and they're um, they're just all over the body, which is okay, but I'd vary a little bit more. And um, in shadows, I wouldn't make it as visible as in the uh, highlighted areas. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the effect. Um, it just you just lose a bit of the interest of it, you know, if you have it like everywhere um, in the same intensity and in the same visibility. Uh, it, it looks like you put a photo then on top with the texture and put it on, I don't know, overlay layer and uh, mode and warped it a bit, you know, it's just everywhere treated the same way. And um, to have it a little bit more painterly, I'd add more variation for that. And um, yeah, besides that, um, the braids are, the braid tips are super close to each other, all ending at the same length. Um, yeah, only better way to do that. Yeah, like some going or like curving the other direction, stuff like that. Um, they don't have to be like floating or something, but they need space. Um, there's also space, a little bit space in between. They're not pressed together, you know. Mm -hmm. They're lying on top of each other, and they look very pressed, you know. So yeah, it looks like they're almost tied in a bundle, and I would expect them to kind of fan out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But else, like the rendering and sort of style is really cool. I like this mm -hmm. paint painterly approach and the way you treated the drapery here and the blue color and the drapery and all that. It's cool. Cool. Yeah, I just trying to bring out some of that. Um probably putting too much color into that cloth or something with it. Uh, but yeah, I would break up that hair and let some of that stuff on the face, maybe getting some of the bigger pieces of gold in the areas and letting them almost unify together a little more instead of just lots and lots of little bitty ones. And to me, that feels a little better. We're getting some more color in this area, and that's nice. Maybe be able to get in and the uh, under areas as well, particularly where I'd be looking at lights would have bounced back up into it. But I don't think he would even require all that much work. Uh, he feels pretty good. I like the, the brightness in his eyes there. The chain around his neck is nice. I mean, the, the necklace with the good stuff. Uh, last one, take a look at more Hasori. Okay, uh, I know it's missing some details and rendering isn't top quality, but time ran out. But you submitted it anyway. Uh, and I think that's a good reminder to everybody is that we recognize that practically everyone here has an actual day job and we have family and life obligations. So if you run out of time and you don't finish, there really isn't any judgment to that. I mean, if you were lazy, I guess that's just one thing. But I mean, do what you can and send it in. Uh, and we will talk about it from where it is. So this one made some changes to the cloth, uh, a little bit to the character design, progressed the rendering some. So it's right on track. Uh, it's just not detailed or, or refined on everything yet. But I... Uh, Definitely having more of kind of the Arabian feel going on here, which is nice for them. And running into some of the same things being like really dark in the hair and the skin on the lady. Maybe needing some other values there. But uh, Anna, let's start with the guy. Uh, what's what's your impressions on, on him and what we can do with him? So I like the changes you did it has a very new dynamic uh, you improved especially how the drapery is flying in the wind it's not creating a tangent there anymore mm -hmm. uh, he has a fierce look he has a good pose um so i really like the changes you did here um it's a bit hard to critique if it's not like finished because the drapery of course 
looks like a cut out, not like drapery yet, um, because basically of the uh, lighting on it and the shadows and um, you, I would have to, you would have to work over that, of course, mm -hmm. um, in order to make it fit the rest of the style. Um, it, it's a bit tricky uh, for me about the rendering to say anything about the rendering because I don't know how far uh, Wojtek, Wojtek uh, finished here. Um, I add some more. We have very monochromatic old brown. Mm -hmm. I definitely changed that, like um, like we did in all the other examples before. Like you know, Clint Magic, do your job. <laughs> Do my job. <laughs> wow. Yes, ma'am. We want it, Clint. <laughs> Mute <Yeah>. yourself. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, like the blue skylight or reflecting. Um, when skin is reflecting on your own skin, it gets warmer. All that. Uh, I don't have to repeat uh, everything. Besides that, yeah, he has has a cool, simple design, but I don't know. There's just something missing. The the belt just doesn't look like it fits the style of this Arabian kind of thing. They they usually don't have this leather kind of um, very Western with, with with the buckle. I think it's called the buckle. Mm -hmm. and all that so i change a bit about that design and add some layers or some interesting things uh to look at it's very plain by now so it's cool but we could add something yeah, yeah. that's what a, some of my notes were as well uh, i'd be looking at possibly giving him sort of strap in order to get another object kind of breaking up just a completely flat chest there uh, maybe those can be another strap like across here and you could have a i think a gold buckle would actually be more consistent with him than a silver belts and stuff uh then maybe we see he's got some sort of pack or quiver or, or something back here and we also want to get a little of that angular reflection talking about earlier and we can get some on top of this this and throw in a little cool light on the top of these Here and yeah, we're trying to break up the, the monotony of the same sort of color on uh, this sort of uh, darker skin at that raking angle is likely going to get us quite a bit of that angular reflection. Let all that be shadowed in behind the body, that's okay. That gold would show up, show up that much. Got a sort of pattern of that back there. And likely catch some of that on his side as well. Dark. Uh, I feel like perhaps he's got satchel down here. This. And wing him out a little bit with the arm guard. Yeah, we're we're just trying to add some more stuff to this guy to make him a bit more interesting. Um, it's too simple right now, and he's got uh, like some sort of cloth wrapped around there. Uh, the traps can have some sort of padding that goes in behind them. A lot of times there'll be like an extra padding underneath it if it's going up or part of the skin. So 
add that in there. I'm feeling like I almost need to indicate a little, little more to the legs and hips there, and possibly letting a little side light kind of tell us what's going on with that leg or adding some fake atmosphere to help separate that front leg from that back leg. Somebody else did that on their own. Sometimes that's a really good solution. Add like a 50% gray over that back leg. And we can even bump some of this up underside. Let that get even brighter. Some color variation there. Let that go against that dark arm. And then we're likely going to be getting that same <clears throat> same sort of effect of the blues and the violets being picked up in the dark skin. You're also going to be getting it on the belts. So in the shadows, it is going to be getting more of that full tones picked up. And with this sort of headpiece, I'm like it might even come down closer to his eyes. And more of the face could actually be shadowed. A shadow pattern kind of crossed here and almost that side. And this would be brought down lower. Yeah. That's the sort of thing I would go with it. Uh, make him feel a little bit more like an adventurer and giving him some more accoutrements, expanding out that uh, color palette a little bit. He's still distinctly in that really warm, sandy range. Uh, but we're introducing more neutrals. They're not even blue. I mean, we're not talking blue. We're just talking practically gray. And, yeah. Uh, with her... Some similar stuff. We're getting so dark here. Uh, what would you do about maybe stepping away from some of that black a little bit? Yeah, definitely on on the face shadows, adding some fill lights, um, some reflections. Um, the lips are super dark. The nose. It's like you can have super dark face, but it's almost too black already. So mm -hmm. you, you just lose a lot of detail um, in the reference that is black white that you have there. It is basically looking that dark. How to say it is it is also processed in, in Photoshop and stuff is pushed. And if you even if you have a photo as a reference that looks good as it is, I'd always recommend to really give it a thought whether you really want to copy just what you see or mm -hmm. that you tweak things. It's often the problem when people say, but I had a reference and it looks <laughs> like that is a reference. And yeah. you hear that so often, but just because a photo says it doesn't mean that it's good as it is in yeah. the photo. And a camera can never reach the amount of um, what was it called dynamic range mm -hmm. as your eye can your eye can see much more than the camera when it comes to different values dark and light next to each other and the camera just goes black often I mean yeah there's HDR and all that but it just for shadows it goes very very easily very fast uh, to black if you have a bright light source or something close by so always be aware of that and also take your artistic license for that. So you have artistic freedom. Don't have to copy your photo. 
the photo is a guide, but not yeah, the base for everything. You, you yeah, just it have should inform the, the art. It shouldn't direct the art. Because yeah. ultimately, at the end, you are creating an illustration. You're not making a photograph, and you're not held to a photographic a direction or what would be 100% realistic. So we don't want to be caught up in thinking that that is the end-all, be-all. Although that can be really useful in help answering questions of what you should do, colors, things should faces. Yeah. From thinking maybe the You just get up to fucking because even like she has <laughs> the reference there. This lady's got some dark skin tone. I mean, it's not the darkest out there, but it's pretty dark. And you notice that there's actually not that much black not on her skin. I mean, she's probably got some eyeliner on because she's looks like she's a model. Um, and so it's pretty dark right there around her eyes, but even her black eyebrows aren't black, right? They're, they're not 100% black. So even on that, we can actually come in here and lighten them up. And we want to get a little more nuanced with some of that color. I'm trying to come in here and notice like around the nose, none of that is black. You can actually tone down quite a bit. And this would take some working with. I mean, I'm trying to throw this together really fast, but this honestly could take a while to put together. What about the hair and the cloth? Uh, what stands out to you on those? Um, it's the same issue as before. It's like the cloth has all the same color, all the same brightness everywhere, just a little cast and, and a little form shadow uh, at the fold and the inside. We can have, like you had with the other um, examples before, a little bit more glow for the inside, the inside of a um, of this this head part of this cape doesn't have to be dark. It it's there's light all around in the area and it's shining through so it will it can get quite bright even though mm -hmm. you have a lot of color a lot of warm color because of the light like getting reflected within uh the drapery and being bounced around and it forms up um the color temperature and all that so yeah definitely adding colors Maybe even having a little bit more shadow. It's like the shoulder and all that. It's super bright and it's not interesting for us because the face is our main focus. So we don't need that bright light on on everything on her. So have it more focused on where you want the person to look at. Um, and for the hair, Ooh, uh, yeah, it's the same, add some, some grace as, as we did before with the other um, people who drew this kind of threads and um, have some variety with the color. This hair looks pretty bound, like bound together by some kind of golden thread or so. Have some strays, add some texture mm. for, for mm -hmm. it, basically. All I can say. Could I'm back in a minute? I leave you alone for a minute and I'm All back. Right. Yeah, we definitely have to pull out some of the form. Uh, and remember, essentially, this is just a cylinder. There has to be some sort of light and dark pattern to this. 
that we can understand what's going on with it. And she's right, it does need some, some strays, it needs a little variation there. Uh, anywhere it's going to be kind of overlapping something else. And you're going to get some of that color uh, over here. Uh, it's probably going to be getting thicker there where the embroidery is at the edge. So I could be marking off where that is on the inside. And then everything other than that could be getting a little brighter because the light is going to have an easier time, uh, you know, getting through the fabric and doing some backlighting to that fabric. And then anywhere that it is a little thicker, it's not going to. And I'm going to reach for the cool tone of those shadows through that area. I don't want that too strong because the light's going to filter through it. Uh, then the upwards angle on those, it's likely going to be now, which way is it facing? And what is that direction? Is there a light source? Probably sky up there or something. And same thing up here. Light up. Now I might be changing the light in this little bit and and you don't have to do what i'm doing i'm throwing it yeah, together real quick oh, cool. this is definitely a place where you have pretty much white fabric under a bright direct light i mean that can go white or next to white and that's okay uh, but ultimately i think that would be the direction to go with it you're bringing that skin back into the mid-tones a lot more uh, because even if she has got really dark skin, it just doesn't print very well. And we have to make sure that ultimately the viewer has a good idea of what they're looking at. Uh, on the gold, make sure that you are bringing in some other colors besides just yellow and, and orange. And especially into the shadow areas, we can actually let that tone down a bit. And so, like you had said earlier, the gold in the lit areas are is going to really show up a lot better yeah yeah i like the changes looks cool all right well it's a little past four my time uh that wrapped it up uh but for those of you that did not join at the beginning uh remember we've got a couple of things going on with the discord once you finish your art piece for the challenge, go put it in the before and after room on the Discord under the art challenge section. And I also want to do a series of videos on how to improve. And that's where you send in your image. There's a room called uh, how to improve submissions on the Discord. Put in your image and then put in what you're trying to improve. This needs to be a specific thing. How do I improve the lighting of this magic object? How do I get a better sense of motion? How do I get this to feel more ominous? You know, something like that. And I want to do a series of five or 10 minute videos, which each video uh, addressing a particular thing. Now, uh, I also do not have an art challenge coming out. Normally when we finish an art challenge, we immediately kick off another challenge. But as we get to the end of the year, we have holidays coming up and people don't have nearly as much time as we think so i mean we even saw that one on this one right we haven't even got to the holiday season and at least half of the people said wow i didn't have as much time as i thought uh so going forwards we probably will not have another art challenge till the rent end uh, of the year so we'll wrap up december but if I am home, I should still be doing a live stream or premiering a video on Friday. So do turn in uh, next week on Friday and we should still have something going on. I'll let you know what that is uh, as that's figured out. Uh, anything that you want to talk to the people about? Anything that we've forgotten about? No, but to, um, if, if they had an idea for something you could do or are you already filled with ideas for streams for the December time um, that you don't need any? Uh, I'm always open to taking ideas. Mm -hmm. So feel yeah. free to, I, I would suggest putting it in the description of the video when it posts, 
because that actually helps the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to go back and actually you know, like the video. That also really helps. Uh, Demon Souls. You want to do a Demon Souls? <laughs> uh, yeah, that yeah. did launch on the PS5. That's right. Uh, and Warhammer. I would have to brush up on those. I've never played Demon Souls, <laughs> and I've never played Warhammer, but I know a little bit about War. We'll have to see. Uh, but yeah, write that in somewhere and uh, let me know. And I, I keep a list of ideas for live stream topics. Uh, I may next week actually use Friday as a vibrance episode. That's kind of what I'm running in my head right now. Oh, nice. All right. I've got to wrap it up. And uh, thanks so much for taking the time. And make sure you're getting on the Discord group or the Facebook group. Stay in touch with the community. Get some feedback. And uh, until Anna and I see us see you next time, keep drawing. Bye. <laughs> Bye.